Hey, what's up guys? Ruben Arce here with another video. Today I'm going to explain how I test my 16mm cameras using black and white film at home. This is the difference, at home. And in order to do this, you need to know how to process film and you need to understand a simple process that it actually uh, can be done with pretty much any camera if you are careful this applies to 16 millimeters cameras it doesn't matter if they have a magazine or if they are they only have the the film chamber um, what i'm going to do i'm going to use as i said before black and white film this is a dummy obviously but i'm going to use 7222 also known as double x i'm going to expose the film using a krasnogorsky 3 and then i'm going to load those uh, few four or five feet of film into this reel and this is a janky standard film uh, most janky um, tanks will work with different formats and by the way this also applies to 35 millimeters cameras um, if you have one of those probably I'm pretty much sure you know that but I'm going to explain this for uh, using simple cameras pretty much uh, with any camera and this applies to any camera really but it's more complicated with Super 8 cameras I have a Scoopic here can Scoopic gray uh, not in great condition I'm not use going to use that that one but as you can see it says full spool full spool and then when you put your reel of film your spool here the brand new one it goes through the mechanism of the camera here's the gate and it's a very simple photochemical process light enters the film exposes the the film while it runs through the camera and in it ends up here on the take up side i have some npr cameras eclair NPRs, and some um, cinema products cp16 cp16 cameras and i have done this same process using those cameras i actually did it using a Compass 2m 35 millimeters camera and the way you do it it's uh the same pretty much the same it's more difficult to do it with super 8 because you have to open the cartridge but it would be um, possible as well okay so what you want to do is you expose a few feet of film four or five which is the amount of film that this reel is going to take so i'm going to explain using another camera but I, uh, as i said before i just wanted to demonstrate that this can be done with any camera and the trick here uh as you probably know we're talking about a uh, photosensitive material which is film so you have to do this the trick is doing this in total darkness if you do that if you do the entire process it can be done and then you can use the inexpensive um, chemicals used to process black and white film and you get an image I have a K3 here Krasnogorsk K3 uh, this one is modified by uh, to ultra 16 I modified the camera myself and I have made some some changes to the original design of the camera not nothing really impressive here but I'm going to talk about that later in other videos so what I'm going to do is this is the process you want to load the film in total darkness or and I'm talking about these as an option to don't waste your film what you want to do what i want to do what i do is i load the cameras in total darkness and i'm gonna do it here uh this is not if i do it in total darkness you wouldn't, wouldn't be able to see this thing but i'm going to load the camera and i'm going to explain what i do uh i already cranked the camera so what i'm going to i'm going to do the, the process that i do most of the time to load the camera as you can see this one doesn't have the the loop formers i'm going to remove the gate for now there are several videos uh, where they talk about loading a k3 
that's what I want. I want one finger here and one finger on the other side. I'm not talking about loading the camera exactly, but I have to do it anyway, so I'm gonna explain it. Um, I already have that loop on the top. I run the film a bit more, and then I'm going to load this part manually. And something that you want to do, something that you want to make sure all the time, is that the make sure that the film is actually engaged on the sprockets. I want two fingers on this side, and this is how I do it in Total Darkness. I measure one finger here, as I said before, one on one inside the loop, one on, on the other side, and on, at the bottom, I want two fingers, and then I put this thing back, and I have to, if, if you see there, the film is not actually engaged their position and there it is i found the, the, the point where one of the sprockets is grabbing the film double check i have two fingers on that side and i can run the camera now i'm going to finish uh loading the camera this is my take up reel and again this is not a tutorial about loading the camera but some good points if you want to take them into consideration and I do it in total darkness at this point I can cover the the, the chamber the film chamber lock it and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot something it could be a chart uh, in this case I'm going to set something nicer I'm going to take a shot of one of my cameras my my Nikon F3 I'm going to add some lighting to make it look good and I'm going to recreate the process so pretty much what I'm going to do is the camera is loaded I I have a lens I measure my light I set my my shot uh, again it can be a chart it can be a whatever you want to shoot and then I film okay so we are ready to uh, take a shot I wanted to do something simple I don't have a lot of space but I wanted to show you guys a real situation. So I prepared this thing. I'm going to take a shot of this. One of my favorite uh, cameras and one of my favorite subjects, so, which is my Nikon F3, um, which is gonna be a very simple shot. I have a Kresnogors here. The camera is ready to, to take the shot. Um, I have a Vivitar lens, the lens it's a 2.8 and we're gonna take the shot at 5.6 that piece of gaffer tape that you see in there it's um, acting as a um, lens hood so I have this LED light and the LED light is bouncing on the, that piece of foam board and I have another piece of foam board on the other side. I don't want this to be uh, extremely contrasting. The camera is already black, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep some balance. And I have my, I'm sorry, I'm sorry guys, <laughs> I'm holding the camera and doing these things at the same time. My super reliable Psychonic L558 Cine. Love this meter and I already take a couple of measurements so on the key side which is uh, this side with where the light is I'm getting a 5.6 on the other side the bounce uh, I'm getting a 2.5 which is pretty close to 2.8 so we, we have three pretty much two stops which is pretty a very nice uh, contrast and I actually measured that wide door that you guys can see on the back it's uh, measuring at 2.8 which is interesting be interesting because uh, it's gonna be on the same level as the fill side but the fill side of the camera in this case it's black so it's gonna be darker obviously but if we measure and compare the the light here on this side and then the light on the door it's uh, the level of the light is at the same at the same level 
the camera, a Krasnogorsk K3 converted to Ultra 16, uh, 24, 24 frames per second. It's already loaded. Uh, remember that the shutter angle of the K3 is actually 150 degrees, not 180. And we are going to shoot this thing right here. Um, sorry about the terrible camera work, but I'm trying to do all those things at the same time. And the space is tight. It's Kodak or Eastman 7222, uh, also known as Double X, which is a negative film. And something interesting about this film is, and if you shoot this film using tungsten light, the ISO, it's 200. If you use this same film using daylight, the exposure index or ISO, which is what I'm going to use in this case, is 250. 250. So this light, LED light, which is kind of bright, it's putting out a good amount of daylight balanced light. So I'm going to use the 250 option. We already talked about the camera and this is how I test my cameras. Like I'm going to shoot something, it's going to be a few seconds, but that is going to let me see um, how the camera works, how the film works, if the image is in focus. I'm aligning the camera with the, the other camera. So this is pretty much what we can expect. For, we're going to see that uh, on the film as soon as we process it and scan it. Um, I get very good results guys and here in my room you can see that thing is a <laughs> on the wall I have a Super 16 frame uh, the lines and I that allows me to test cameras that's sort of the stuff that I'm always doing here um, to work with my cameras and using one of these rolls by the way I'm going to talk about that later uh, in detail but I could use this film of roll of film to test 10 cameras and I do that with 35 millimeters uh, still photography cameras here's another thing that I shoot often uh, this is a just an image uh, a fine print that I use to test how sharp lenses are and I have some lines that's a regular 16 uh, frame and as you can see the, the lines are straight so that allows me to see if what I see through the viewfinder matches the what I see on the camera so let's do it Okay, so I'm doing this at night, and this is my closet. And I'm gonna do this here. And I'm in a basement, so it's even easier for me. I have to do this in total darkness. I'm going to take the film out of the, the camera from here. I'm gonna cut, I got my scissors here already. And I'm gonna load the film on that reel, put it in the tank. Um, I can put the, cam the, the cap back on the camera, cover the developing tank and it's safe. I can turn the lights on. I'm going to find this part and I'm going to cut here. I can remove this again in total darkness. The camera can stay the way it is right now. I can remove the film if I don't want to reuse it and put it back on its uh, case. And to do that, I would cut this film here. I'm going to do it. I'm, you're going to see that uh, part later. So if I put the, the cap back, my film is safe now, but still we are in total darkness at this point and what I want to do with this is I want to load it again in total darkness this has to be in 
done in total darkness and you need to know how to load reels and all those things so this is not for everyone but again it's not complicated i'm going to put the film here and at this point with this kind of reel i can crank it up and it's going to load the film in there as you can see and if you know about processing film you can see there where the film is so it's not even close to the amount of film that i can use but you don't want to force it because these films these uh, reels were not designed to process this kind of film so if they can scratch your film but the process works the image for the most part is gonna be in the middle so again we are in total darkness i put this reel inside the tank i cover the tank and i can turn the lights on at this point uh, here's the tank here's the film already and i wanted to show you that i'm going to use kodak d76 developer uh, not ideal for this kind of film but it works fine for me then i use fixer and at the end i use photo flow i don't use um stub bath i just use water and i'm going to use this thing this app which is called develop and i have my recipes there and as you can see, you can see the first the first one it's uh, is isman double x and it tells me that I have to develop for seven minutes, then wash, wash it, and then uh, fix it. Okay, so here it is. Um, this is the last step. It's called photo flow. And the image. there it is I'm trying to show you these guys, guys at the same time while I have a lavalier mic but this is what I was talking about you can see that's the the film that's the first part of the film I loaded the camera and there's nothing there and then suddenly I have uh, my exposed film and I don't have fog or anything like that like what you get when you load the camera in not in total darkness there it is you can see the camera there so the film that I processed it's already here and I'm going to use this piece of translucent plastic to take a picture. I have a flash or speed light. Back there I have a plastic bag behaving as diffuser. And I have my Nikon D810 here with a wireless trigger and my beautiful macro one to one 90 millimeters lens that is going to allow me to take the picture so i'm going to take a picture of the the film i have a scanner but for small formats like 16 mil uh, i know that the best option is dslr okay so it was a very simple uh, thing as soon as you have this thing uh, set up so there it is Here is the file that I, the picture that I took with my camera. I'm gonna use Photoshop, Photoshop to to process this image. Um, you're gonna see the results. So it's gonna be 
negative obviously I'm going to use the, the black and white option and this is a camera raw um, plugin I'm going to just open the image and work it up in inside Photoshop so here it is first thing I'm gonna do is rotate the image clockwise and then horizontally I'm going to straighten the image using the sprocket holes and pretty much what I want here is I want one picture but I'm probably I'm I didn't show this part before you can see the strip here you can see the actual 60 millimeters 60 millimeter uh, strip and you can see some things uh, there is nothing on the edges like there the can there are no light leaks on the camera which is a great thing uh, I didn't even use the after state on the edges of the, the camera covering the, the chamber um, we can see we have we have an image and it looks decent we're gonna invert it in a minute but you can inspect this thing and you are gonna be looking for scratches you're gonna be looking for things that you most of them you would try to find in a camera test right the difference is you don't have to wait one or two or three weeks and put the, the film in the mail and send it to another part of the country and then wait just to to realize when you get the the files back that your camera is not working properly uh, I can see some scratches here one thing and I have to clarify this is the developing reels are not were not designed to to work with this kind of film even when they can process then they can be used to process 110 which is the format similar to 60 millimeter film in still photography you can get scratches uh, I mean the, the reel can scratch the film so this is not exactly like 100% reliable if you get scratches in this area most I mean they're gonna be they're gonna come from your camera because this the reel doesn't touch this area I see something here so at this point this is uh, great because I know this is constant and it could be the camera scratching or it be the reel I'm going to use these two points there it is and as you can see the camera is a super 16 uh, I mean an ultra 16 camera <laughs> sorry about that um, meaning the image it's going between the sprocket holes the original image you can see here where the, the regular 16 frame was that's a regular 16 area so that's what you get the these areas on the sides that's what you get with ultra 16 converted cameras now what I want to extract it's a 16 by 9 frame with ultra 16 you have to go like right there that's just, that's what you're using and it's a, a, a good difference considering this is the the regular 16 area this second line you can see how if the, the original frame there actually I'm going to that's original frame so yeah we're we are um, getting more actual resolution we are using the film a bit more and I was I, w I wanted to talk about this scratch I'm not worried about it because I'm not going to use that area what I'm going to do again select this image and then I'm going to center this image and you are gonna see that I don't need a, I don't need this area that it's not perfectly uh, captured and I don't need this area neither so I'm not worried about that scratch that I was talking about before this is what I can extract 
this is a 16 by 9 image when you convert a camera to ultra 16 you can expect to get a 1.85 to 1 area which is very close to 178 to 1 also known as 16 by 9 high definition television so if I want to extract any of those you can see the scratch is here so it's not affecting my image if I want to be greedy and I, if I, I want to use those areas I can do it and then I could do something about the, the scratch but at this point I'm not not worried about it so I'm centering the image as, as you can see this area you're not using all that area really so let's do it there and then I'm going to go to adjustment image adjustment I'm going to invert the image and I can tell you already that this image is not as good as other images that I have captured with Super 16 cameras and film. Okay, so I can see that the image is in focus, but the image is not perfectly in focus. That means either that the lens is soft or my camera needs to be adjusted. I think the lens is actually kind of soft. And I'm going to do this test again using the, the, the lens that came with the, the Krasnogorsky 3. So I can compare the results. But I have another image here and I'm going to bring it to Photoshop. This is a an image that I took with my Eclair MPR in a much better lens. And you can see this thing is it has a lot of detail. You see that? That's out of 60 millimeters film processed at home scan using probably my DSLR or my scanner. I don't remember how I scan this. But look at the amount of detail that you can get. This is at home. So imagine what a good camera with a good lens can do. This is my Eclair MPR. And if I compare this result to this one, it's in, clearly it is inferior. It is soft. And it's more grainy. On this image, I, I use Tri-X, which is uh, also black and white film from Kodak. And this is 7222. 7222 is famous because of its grain. I love the grain, by the way, it doesn't bother me. But it could be affecting the, the sharpness of the image. I mean, you cannot compare this to this. And I'm going to say it's a lens, I'm going to repeat the test so I can determine if I need to get my camera service professionally because that, that would be the focal flange distance uh, and the focusing screen distance and those are things that I don't want to mess with. But uh, good news, the exposure is pretty good. Uh, I like the lighting. I, I have done this before. As you can see, I like shooting my cameras and, and I like lighting in a nice way. That's the idea of my channel. Even when I'm doing the camera, I work for by myself and I cannot... Uh, have really good quality at this point. Another really good thing is my horizon and this is something very important to me because a one degree angle, it, an image that is tilted just a one degree bothers me a lot and it is a lot. Uh, I'm gonna do it here. That's 1.2 degrees that bothers me and as you can see straight out of the camera I'm getting a perfectly aligned um, image I balance my tripod and as you can see all those lines especially the the door because I didn't didn't balance this thing it was on top of my bed but you can see it is pretty good so I that's another thing that I like to know I'm happy about it. I have some um, light leak here. It is coming through the lens and it's because we have the big light here on this side 
And if you remember, I had the gaffer tape uh, on the lens. I'm not use. I was not using a matte box or anything like that. It's a lot of work, uh, but I could eliminate this part and I can see that the process is working every single thing I mean we have a nice pleasant image that's what I uh, um, can tell about this image again not super sharp we can repeat the, the test using a different lens at 5.6 it should be in focus um, and it is not so it needs to be fixed um, some other things we can again exposure I have my own method to expose my film and I may talk about that later but I can tell that my my images are right on the spot I'm not worried about that uh, I talked about this side being again receiving the same amount of light as, as door and this is a in my opinion, it's a very simple shot, but a pleasant one. Um, no scratches, no scratches at all, so I can be glad about that. My camera is not scratching film, not in the main area, at least. And uh, that area that, that we talked about, I don't need that part. So, I'm good. Um, what else? What else can we determine using this test? Um... Well, we know that the camera works. I know that if I send a roll to the lab, it's going to be sharper, it's going to be... Uh, the, the, the grain is going to be finer, especially if I use a something like 50D Kodak Vision 3. It would be much better. But at this point, I'm, I'm happy with these results. Um, it's a very nice image that is at a 100%. This is an image coming from 60 millimeters film, processed at home. Uh, I keep that roll in my closet. It's not in my fridge or anything. Um, so it could be grainier than usual. But very pleased about this image. Um, this area that I have here, at this point, it's at, at 100%. But it it is bigger than... 2K really. Um, I'm gonna do it pretty quick just to finish this video, and I'm, I wanna thank you guys for for watching. Um, this is interesting stuff that you don't see everywhere. At least I didn't. I have never seen it. So this is uh, what I did. Is I started a new project, I could say, and, I, and that is a 1080p area and this is my original image so you can see the amount of information of pixels that I have so using this method I could tell definitely that this is at least uh, 2k I'm not saying I'm going to scan a, an entire roll of film using this thing but I'm just talking about the resolution that you can use uh, going back to my original image and we're going to finish this video uh, please subscribe please like the video if you liked it if you like the content and see you guys in the next one